Today, we take a look at Delaware, the first state to ratify the Constitution. The second smallest state in the Union, it may be tiny, but its location as part of the Northeast Corridor puts it near some of the biggest cities and most historically important places in America. The many wonderful things you can find within its border helps it live up to its nickname, the Small Wonder. Places I like about Delaware is my house. The beach, the rocks, I like the sand, I like the ocean, I like the fish. Dover's the capital. Tax-free shopping. That was a nice place. You should come see it. There's a lot to do here. Feel free to use the worksheet we have created that is aligned with this video, found in the description below. Keep watching to learn about the small but sixth most densely populated state in our country and to discover our world in a meaningful way. Fort Delaware was built as a defensive fortification for Philadelphia in the rest of the Delaware River area. Built before the Civil War, it also acted as a prisoner of war camp to house Confederate soldiers. During the Civil War, it held almost 33,000 men. Located on Peapatch Island, today it is now part of the Fort Delaware State Park. We will learn more about the Civil War in our next day video, Pennsylvania. Gonna go in the water of ratification. From here on out, folks. John Dickinson, the penman of the American Revolution and writer of America's first government, the Articles of Confederation, spent much of his childhood and adult life in Kent County at Poplar Hall, better known today as the John Dickinson Plantation. The 13,000 acre plantation was home to many people who were enslaved until 1777, when Dickinson freed the slaves at Poplar Hall. A stone's throw away from the Dickinson Plantation is the Dover Air Force Base, the busiest and largest air freight terminal in the Department of Defense. One of the few homes to the C-5, the largest airplane in the Air Force, Dover is the primary staging point for delivering troops and supplies to American military bases around the world. If you're in Dover, check out the Air Mobility Command Museum. It's definitely worth a trip. There are tons of planes! At the AMC Museum, you could go in the planes. That C-5 was huge! The museum offers tours of many airplanes, including a former Air Force Two, responsible for transforming six former first ladies, five former vice presidents, four presidents, and even the Queen of England. Delaware is at the Mid-Atlantic. The new mayor win in Pennsylvania. Delaware is on the coastal plains, meaning that most of it is flatland. How flat do you ask? Delaware has the lowest average elevation of any state in the nation. It's hard to find hills to sled on in Delaware. Snowboarding? What's that? Despite its small size, Delaware has two separate regions that are very different from one another, northern and southern Delaware. They are divided by the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal. Northern Delaware is more urban and considered part of the Philadelphia metropolitan area, while Southern Delaware is more rural, with farms and access to the ocean. More on Delaware beaches later in the episode. They call Southern Delaware, Lower Lower Delaware. I don't think that's really nice. The coast of Delaware is a really important stop for migratory animals. Bombay Hook is one of the most important stops along the Atlantic Flyway for birds, and the Delaware Bay beaches are the biggest nesting ground for horseshoe crabs in the world. The horseshoe crab, one of the oldest animals on the planet, attracts even more birds, such as the Red Knot, which travels from Argentina to the North Pole every year, stopping in Delaware to feed on horseshoe crab eggs. Horseshoe crabs are cute, and they bring a lot of birds with them. More than 1 million businesses have incorporated in Delaware, meaning that there are more businesses that call Delaware home than there are people living in the state. The money gained by the corporations helps Delaware generate money without having a sales tax. Because of Delaware's established corporate law and benefits, more than half of all U.S. publicly traded companies and 63% of the Fortune 500 are incorporated in Delaware. If you have a big business, it makes sense for a lot of reasons to make a corporation. And if you do, come on down in Delaware. Delaware has other big businesses, including chicken farming, banking, and manufacturing chemicals. Is that why it's the first brew hen? 
No, Professor. The blue hen is Delaware State Bird because it was the nickname of a company of Delaware soldiers during the Revolutionary War who brought their chickens with them. The company gained the nickname the Blue Hens and the rest is history. On December 7th, 1787, 30 delegates meeting in Dover at the Golden Fleece Tavern unanimously made Delaware the first state to ratify the United States Constitution. December 7th has been considered Delaware Day since 1933. Has anything else happened on December 7th in American history? Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a day that will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Many, if not all, of Harriet Tubman's journeys to freedom for herself and the more than 70 people she guided ran through Delaware. Entering the state near Sandtown along the Choptank River, Tubman would travel to Camden, Delaware and get help from free men Nathaniel Brinkley, William Brinkley, and Abraham Gibbs, who would often help her and many others past the towns of Dover and Smyrna. She and others running for freedom would also receive help from Thomas Garrett in Wilmington. Garrett once claimed that he helped 2,700 people reach freedom before the Civil War ended slavery. We made videos about Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. Check them out if you want to know more. The only battle that has ever occurred on Delaware soil was the Battle of Cooch's Bridge near Newark during the Revolutionary War. Though it was a minor skirmish, many believe it was the first battle in which the American army flew the American flag. The battle was an attempt by the Colonials to buy Washington time to better defend an attack on Philadelphia. Current President Joe Biden is the first Delawarean to be elected as President of the United States. Prior to becoming the 46th president, he served as a United States Senator for Delaware for 36 years and served as Vice President under President Barack Obama for eight years. For a closer look at what to expect with Joe Biden as president, check out our video, Joe Biden as President. I like Joe Biden because he's nice and he wears a mask. Caesar Rodney served as President of Delaware during much of the American Revolution and served in the Continental Congress from 1774 until 1776. What he has most famous for is for his ride to Philadelphia to help Delaware vote for independence from Great Britain. The Delaware delegates were split on the issue and called for Rodney to break the tie. To make sure Delaware voted for independence, Rodney rode 70 miles through a thunderstorm on the night of July 1st, 1776. Once it was passed, Caesar Rodney became one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. An image of his ride can be found on the back of Delaware Quarters. It was the first image that was different from the traditional eagle symbol in the 50 states quarter program. The Kim Professor's from Delaware. He's pretty famous. I'm from Delaware, man. There is an Amish community of over 1,000 people living outside of Dover, a group of people that don't live a modern way of life. The Amish began in the late 17th century by followers of Jacob Amman a Swiss minister who believed that followers should forsake the world in their daily lives. The word Amish comes from his name. Many Amish people speak Pennsylvania Dutch. Danke. Most Amish groups live in the way that their ancestors did hundreds of years ago. They don't allow owning cars, using electricity, self-propelled farm machinery, a television, radio, or computer. Amish kids finish school in the 8th grade as they feel that is all that is needed to live their way of life, often working on a farm, as carpenters, or at a market. Believers of peace, they do not join the military and they do not accept divorce. Wait a second! The Amish don't play Minecraft? The Amish do not consider technology to be evil, but they do believe that it would cause its members to want to leave the church and endangers their way of life. One of the wealthiest and historically important families in America is the DuPont family. Their fortune in America began in the gunpowder business. Over time, the DuPont company grew into the largest black powder manufacturing firm in the world. Today, the Hagley Museum in Wilmington is on the site where E.I. DuPont founded black powder mills on the banks of the Brandywine Creek. The Hagley Museum has exhibits and demonstrations that show the connections between early industrial technology and early American history, focusing on the histories of the DuPont family, DuPont Company, 
explosives, and gunpowder. Another museum worth visiting thanks to the DuPont family is Winterthur. It houses one of the most important collections of Americana in the United States of America. Winterthur was the home of Henry Francis DuPont, a renowned antiques collector and horticulturalist. Today, the DuPont de Nemours Incorporation is one of the world's largest producers of chemicals and science-based products. DuPont is responsible for developing innovative materials such as Teflon, Nylon, Kevlar, and many other commonly used items. The Firefly Music Festival is held in Dover each July. The three-day festival is the largest music and camping experience on the East Coast and has hosted some of the biggest acts in the music industry. Firefly happens on the grounds of Dover International Speedway, better known as the Monster Mile, a racetrack that has held NASCAR races since 1969. The mascot of the Speedway is Miles the Monster, who was featured on the winner's trophy, track tickets, memorabilia, website, and the 46-foot monster monument just outside the track. Millions of people visit Delaware beaches every year. Most of the visitors are from Pennsylvania, Maryland, Washington, D.C., New York, and New Jersey. They call Wahlberg Beach the nation's summer capital. Even Joe Biden has a house near here. It gained that name many years ago because of the reputation it has for vacationers coming from Washington, D.C. A popular getaway for senators and congressmen over the years, current President Joe Biden recently bought a house outside the Rehoboth Beach town limits. A longtime vacationer in the area, the Bidens have been spotted in many locations around town over the years. Perhaps the most iconic place at the Delaware beaches, not to be confused with the New Jersey Shore, is the Rehoboth Beach Boardwalk, which is consistently ranked as one of the best boardwalks in the United States. Delaware beaches also rank at or near the top of water quality for the 30 states with a coastline, coming in first in 2011 and 2014. Another great place to visit in the Delaware beach area is Cape Henlopen State Park, home to Fort Miles, a World War II installation with miles of beautiful trails and beaches. Other popular beaches include Dewey Beach, Bethany Beach, and Fenwick Island, each with their own charming personality. As with all the states, you can discover the world in a meaningful way by exploring Delaware and the many people, places, and things that it has to offer the rest of the world. Come to Delaware! Come to Delaware! Come, come, come here to Delaware! I want to meet you because you're my fan. I want to meet you. I want to meet you. Come subscribe to me. Come subscribe. I want to meet you right now.